lovelies! So welcome to part one of my vlogs from Japan and Korea. There is no hope in hell I'd be able to fit any of this all into one video, so I'm probably going to do a video per day uh, because we did so much on these trips. I keep getting mixed up on what days we did what because it like we did so many things that it feels like we should have been there for more days if you go know what I mean. I realize that we weren't. So this will be day one. Uh, stay tuned for day two of Japan and then three days of Korea. So as often with my vlogs, this is going to be part me talking and part the actual vlogs from the place just to fill any gaps that I didn't get because we were just non-stop so it's easier for me to do it this way rather than trying to remember to say certain things while we're there. So this trip was pretty mental. It was just like so crazy. We got back from LA and we were home from LA for about a week and then we we're off to Asia and uh, this trip was actually provided for us by um, the tourism boards out there and Samurai Buyer which is like an auction website where you can buy things from Japan even if you're not in Japan if you get me. Um, helped like you know sort of like put it all together and like you know t team us up if you get, get what I mean. So yeah we flew out it was a pretty long flight it was a, I think it was slightly longer than our trip to LA. So we flew from Belfast over to London Heathrow and then there was a long layover but we got like a cool little um, hotel room thing in the airport. By the way my boyfriend did uh, daily vlogging through all of this so if you want to see all the stuff I didn't get you can go check his channel. Uh, but yeah, so we had this weird little like hotel room thing, so I just it was like a 10 hour layover and I just slept through most of that. Uh, then we flew straight from London Heathrow to Incheon Airport in Korea, which is near Seoul. And then we flew from there over to Fukuoka in Japan. So it was a lot of travel, a lot of flying, a lot of running around airports. Uh, but we finally made it to Fukuoka at about half nine at night, I think, over there. And uh, we were pretty wrecked, but we were really excited to meet everyone immediately. Like, we were greeted in the airport by everyone, and everyone was so super nice. Uh, so we headed from Fukuoka Airport into the actual city to go to our hotel room for that night and stuff. And, uh, you know, got chatting to everyone. And then after that, most people went to bed. We went out with our friends uh, from Samurai Bayer to an izakaya, which is like a food pub type thing that they have in Japan, which I'm in love with now because I really enjoyed all the food. Uh, so we went there and got loads and loads of things. We got to try a lot of new food and that was really cool. We didn't record any of that because we were both just wrecked by that point. Plus we didn't want to just immediately be shoving cameras in people's faces and we just wanted to chill and talk and eat food. And it was a super, super lovely night. Uh, Jake got really drunk. And then we went back to the hotel room and got some sleep. Uh, I think I woke up at like five o'clock in the morning so I could do my hair and stuff and then we headed out. So we didn't actually spend any time in Fukuoka, we just flew in there and then spent the night so we could get a fresh start in the morning, which is a shame because it seemed like a really lovely city and I would love to see Fuku Fukuoka but like properly at some point because it was really cool. And uh, yeah, just getting there, it was so surreal just walking around because like I watched so many like vloggers from Japan, Japanese movies, anime and stuff. So it's it, it was weird, like everything felt so familiar even though I'd never been there before in my life, just from those things, if you know what I mean. But yes, yeah, so that was the first night, and now let's move on to our first full day in Japan. Okay, so this is our first proper day in Japan. We got in last night and went out for dinner and that was really lovely, and then passed out because we were super tired from all the travel. Uh, but I'm feeling like really good today. My sleeping schedule is actually more normal here than it is back home. So jet lag isn't an issue, thankfully. And uh, yeah, we're on our way to Nagasaki right now. We're um, in Fukuoka for the first night and we have loads of stuff to do today. So I'm really excited and you're coming along with me. Yeah, you, guys. Your husband made this map? Yes. Oh, that's so cool. I'm not good at drawing. I always ask my husband to draw it. So, Japan consists of four islands, mm -hmm. Hokkaido, Nota Park, and Honshu means main island, mm -hmm. Shikoku, smallest island, and Kyushu island, four mm -hmm. islands. Uh, this is Kyushu, and Kyushu consists of seven prefectures. We call each prefecture. Mm -hmm. So you are in Fukuoka city in Fukuoka prefecture. Okay. okay. And Fukuoka city is the largest city in Kyushu. Okay. And with a population of 1.5 million. And you are we, we are moving to Nagasaki. Nagasaki city in Nagasaki prefecture. It's about a two hour drive. And also you can go there by express train or express bus. Mm. Always two hours. Cool. And two, the 
tomorrow we are moved to Saga Prefecture. <laughs> Are just taking a little break. Um, I think we're about 40 minutes away from where we're going. Jake is back there getting some shots and then I think we've got to grab a snack or something. It is chilly here but it's like pretty much the same as home so <laughs> but yeah it's definitely a cold cold day but uh, I'm enjoying myself so much like I didn't sleep at all on the bus because I've just been way too hyped and yeah and just like even <laughs> everything's so exciting even like <laughs> the vending machines are like <gasps> so I'm having such a good time. We got to Nagasaki the first thing we we're doing is going to get some lunch uh, Nagasaki is a really interesting place because if I'm remembering correctly there was so much information that I learned over the week in Asia so try to remember everything and stuff but I'm pretty sure at one point that was the only like connection from the rest of the world to Japan if you get what I meant so any trading or anything was done through Nagasaki and nowhere else I believe yeah I'm pretty sure it was like the only connection to the rest of the world for quite a while um, so there's a really interesting mix of cultures there. You can even see it in the architecture. There's like a lot of different sort of Influences you can like really clearly see it. So that was really really cool And the food we had was like a famous like Nagasaki, Nagasaki cuisine um, That kind of also reflects that and it's I think it's called turco rice or like Turkish rice and It was just like a really weird mixture of foods. It was like a mixture of like pilau rice which I think is like Indian and then on the other side of the plate you had like like a spaghetti and tomato sauce and then it was done with um, like a katsu, I think it was either pork or chicken, I think it was like katsu pork on the middle. And so yeah, you had like spaghetti, pilau rice and uh, katsu and it was just like so so strange but it was so good actually, I really really enjoyed it. So that was fun. And uh, the place we had that was like right down by um, like the docks I guess, like where all the boats were and stuff so that was really cool and there was like boats like firing off their horns and it was super loud. So after lunch we went to the Gonkanjima uh, Digital Museum which is really cool because basically later on in the day we went to this amazing island which we'll talk about in a moment uh, but this museum is like uh, it basically allows you to have a digital tour of the island so there was like this amazing big uh, light display in this room so just the whole all of the walls were just covered in this like projection of everything and they had like 3D what's it called they'd like basically recreated the island with uh, like 3D mapping and stuff and like put it up so you get to like see loads of different parts um, of the island all like recreated like digi digitally remastered and stuff and like old photos from back when the island was in use and everything and uh, basically what the island was um, the parts that we learned about anyway were um, it's this island just out in the middle of the sea and it used to actually be an entire city so it's just like this city out in the ocean and uh, the reason for that was there was uh, coal mines under under the sea 
Uh, so everyone like lived on the island and then people worked in the mines and such and at one point it was like the I believe the most densely populated city in Japan if I caught that right um, Even more so than Tokyo. They're like there were more people, you know per square whatever than anywhere else and um, Yeah, it was just this crazy like really heavily thriving city just out in the ocean And obviously then you know boats would go back and forth for trading goods and stuff and it's just like really really interesting to learn about uh, but uh, the island isn't in use anymore in 1974 they closed down the mines and then everyone just had to leave like that was it it was over everyone had to leave their homes and move off of the island and it was left completely abandoned and so since 1974 the island is slow like all the buildings in the city has just slowly started to decay and decay and fall apart and nature started taking over again so it's just like these ruins out at sea and it is like the coolest place. I don't know how I'd never heard of it before in my life. Um, it has a really long history and stuff but we just kind of learned about uh, the people who lived there and stuff and that part of things and then obviously when it closed down and I wasn't sure at first I was like are we actually gonna get to go to the island and we did but first of all we went to this museum we got to see all of that we learned about the people who lived there and one of the coolest parts was because the island is you know all just ruined buildings you're not allowed to just go wandering off um, because it would be an insurance nightmare <laughs> because it's dangerous. So instead of being able to do that, what they have is actually um, like a VR tour of the island. So obviously, you know, people who were insured and qualified to go out there went out with um, all the gear to make a VR video. So you put on the goggles and you, you're t like just taken on this tour of like all the creepy abandoned buildings and you can actually look around and stuff, which was super cool. I think I like there's like a whole bunch of different videos of different areas. I think I managed three or four before I started to feel really sick from the, the uh, VR side of things, but it was so, so cool. And I think that was my first ever time using VR as well. I don't think I've ever played any games or anything. So yeah, that was like super exciting. It was actually quite a long boat ride to get to the island, uh, but I was happy about that because I love going on boats. But as soon as we got to the island, I like perked right up. I was just so excited to be there and see everything. And it was like, because I love exploring abandoned places. I so badly wish I could have just like broken off and like explored the whole island. But it was so cool to see. We got to go around and like, you know, learn more about it. And like there were like these huge hawks just all like circling all over the island. I think they might have been sea eagles, but I'm not sure. But they were just like everywhere. And I was like, whoa. And it was just such a cool, weird, eerie place. So yeah, that was amazing to see. So we have just done the tour of this island. It was super, super interesting. This place is just like, I mean, I had no idea this existed. I don't know how I've never heard of this, but it's just so, so crazy and amazing to be here. It's just so huge. It's crazy. I think this used to be like the most densely populated city back when it was running like more so than Tokyo. And then you guys, <laughs> and then when they closed the mines, everyone just had to leave. Like everyone just, that was it. Everyone had to go. That's just incredible. They wouldn't let me wear um, my shoes in case I got hurt, so. Oh yeah. Living that croc life. <laughs> Are you jealous that you weren't given cool crocs? Yeah, I, like, I was having a good time and then I saw that you had crocs and I was like, damn. <laughs> Day ruined. Day ruined. Kai is so much cooler than me. <laughs> wow. So cool. But yeah, we just had a look around. I will show you some of the footage of that now so you can watch and see a bit of what we saw. There were like really amazing like eagles or hawks of some sort. Uh, swooping around, that was super cool. Thank you. Um, so yeah, like, just between all the amazing buildings and the amazing birds, I'm just I'm having a great time in the sea. I love just the sea air. I am I am pumped, I'm hyped. You hyped? What for? Everything. Hey. Yes. <laughs> having such a good time. だいたいえ、橋間から3キロ弱ぐらい離れてる岩礁地帯があります。え、そこまで新しい地下高度は伸びています。現在から担った、やはりここも一つ。ただね、明治時代にまだ赤岩だって目立てなくなるとこが最近
が通るのが前の方になります。案内を。over to the island the seats we were sitting in were just like inside up on the boat you know it was like all I think it was very warm so I think that's why I fell asleep but on the way back I think we got on the boat last so pretty much all the seats were taken which meant that the only place to sit was like at the very back of the boat there were like the, you know these sort of like bigger bits like right at the back out in the open air which I was so happy about Jake was not Jake like doesn't deal with cold well at all and he was so miserable on the boat ride back but I was having the time of my life like the wind was blowing and just like the sea was splashing up over us and I just I had a great time on the way back so I was definitely awake for that and uh, by the time we got back like I had just like dried salt all over me like from the ocean water <laughs> dried salt from the ocean spray like that's <laughs> babe give my arm a rub what? give my arm a rub see that's like it's not water it's actually like dried salt I am seasoned I am not lightly salted so once we got back into the um, city again we went to this place that was actually like a man-made island and I believe at one point that is like where all the Dutch people lived because they weren't allowed to be out sort of just living like among everyone in Japan so like they had their own little island there. I really hope I'm getting all this information right please like double I'll, I'll link all the places that we went down below and you're free to like read up on these places to make sure I'm not talking crap like I said there's a lot of information coming at us this whole trip Please. Uh, but yeah, so that there was like, um, that's where a lot of Dutch people live. So we went there to have a look around all the cool buildings and we also got to try out kimonos, which was really, really fun. And um, it was like hard to find one for me because I'm so tall. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we got to try those on. It was like just really cool to see because I've never known exactly what goes into a kimono and how it's put on. If I had been left to try to like dress myself in it, I would have been completely lost. There's so many different like layers and things that wrap around. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. So they helped me pick out a kimono and then they, they chose out like the sash and stuff and they did my hair and everything. Uh, so that was really, I just, I, I'm almost sort of like awkward in situations like that. Plus the, um, we had our translators with us, but the, the people who were doing the kimono didn't really speak English. So there was no sort of like chit chat. So I just, I was just kind of standing there letting them do their thing. And they were so nice and, you know, just zooming around looking for all the best like the little accessories and stuff. And it was just like a really lovely experience. And then we got to actually walk around the little man-made island wearing our kimonos, so that was super, super fun.
So we are. <laughs> we're all dressed up. <laughs> I don't know what camera to look at. I don't know. I, uh, I think this is called a kimono for guys. Where is it? Is this a kimono? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so now we're having a little walk around this um, man made island, and there's a lot of history here as well, so it's really cool. And uh, yeah, this is so fun. This is <laughs> what are you? Sorry. Oh, cute! Island and city was restored this year. Oh wow! Year. And really? it will open next week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all the Dutch people who had lived here, had run, uh, had meal, dinner together uh -huh. at captain's room. And if, you know, during Edo period, I mean from 17th until 19th, mid 19th century, we Japanese didn't eat um, beef or pork, oh. only here, uh, and they kept cows. Yeah. Uh, kettles here oh. and chicken. Mm. And they cooked, they had chef here. Mm. The chef cooked all those uh, meat mm. only for them. This place reminds me of So for dinner that night we went to another uh, izakaya in Nagasaki and this one was like super nice. It had like a little private booth so it was just all of us sitting there and um, the people we were with like helped us like order a whole bunch, like they ordered loads of stuff for the table so everyone could just like try a little bit of everything and we got to try loads and loads of food. I didn't remember to record a lot of it because you know we were all just sitting down eating together and having fun but um, we tried loads and loads of different like nice sort of like izakaya type foods and it was just super super good. Around here. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> 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 Together, yeah, the ship so that to prevent all oh, the rats. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, oh, <Yeah. laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so, we just finished eating. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot. Yeah. How are you feeling? She <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah, everything was super good. You want to stay <laughs> And after that we actually went up onto this mountain that you get like the most beautiful view of Nagasaki at night and you just see all the lights down below you and it was just amazing. I wish I hadn't have been so bloody cold so I could have like enjoyed it even more because I was like freezing. It was so so cold that night. But it was just like breathtaking. It was just like this sea of like twinkling stars down below you, and it was so so cool to see because we were just so high up above Nagasaki. So that was really really lovely and really great to see.
so yeah, that is pretty much it for Japan day one. It was just action-packed all day long and it was super super fun and I don't know, I like I, I think I said like in the, the actual vlog I was just as we were driving down into Nagasaki like you know, just on the way from Fukuoka I was just so overwhelmed with emotion. I was just sitting at the back of the bus like don't cry, don't cry, don't cry because I was just oh I'm getting emotional again. I was, just, I was looking around and like everything is so beautiful because like so much of Japan is uh, mountains, almost all of it is mountains and uh, so we were just like driving through these valleys with just like mountains on the other side with just trees like covering them, just these huge forests and it was just so beautiful and I've just, I've been wanting to go to Japan for so long, for so many years of my life I've wanted to go to Japan and I was just sitting there and I was like oh my god we're here, like we're actually, we're here, this is, this is the place that I've always wanted to be and we're here and I was just looking at all the different signs in Japanese and listening to people speak Japanese and stuff and as I say all of that is so strangely familiar and comforting to me because I'm just so used to it from like you know my anime my movies and everything like to the point that even when we were in Korea if we happened to pass by like a group of like say Japanese tourists or something and I heard them speaking Japanese like it immediately catches my ear you know and uh yeah so it's just so weird being in this place that I'd never been but that was so familiar <laughs> and I'm like oh I was very happy <clears throat> that's enough of that <laughs> So, look forward to the next videos. I'll try to get them out quite quickly. I know I still have like the Summer in the City part two vlog and like, oh my God, so many. London Edge vlog, LA vlog, but I'm going to try to get these Asia trips vlog, Asia trip vlogs out like pretty, pretty soon. I hope to have them all out before January is over. Hopefully like within the first two weeks of January, you'll have seen them all. As I say, I'll link uh, Jake's channel down below in case you're impatient and want to see more before I do those vlogs or just if you want to see things from his point of view or like little things that he recorded that I maybe didn't. So yeah, you can go check out his vlogs of our trip as well. So if I'm getting this up tonight, which I'm hoping to, I want to get the first one of these up before the end of the year. Uh, it's New Year's Eve as I'm recording this. I just, no, nope, can't do it. I just want to say a huge Happy New Year to everyone watching, everyone who has supported this channel. Oh my God. A big thank you because like, I mean like this trip to Asia never would have happened without you guys but also just in general for always being there for me especially whenever I'm being a mope like not like this where it's just like happy emotions but I know like especially if you follow me on Twitter I can be a moody a moody moody sometimes so just thank you for like sticking with me even when things are hard I cannot do this I don't I can't handle emotional situations basically just Happy New Year, I wish you all the best in 2018, you know, whatever 2017 was like for you, I hope 2018 is 10 times better either way, whether it was good or bad, I hope it's just so much better and really amazing for you. My 2017 was pretty damn spectacular, so 2018 has some big shoes to fill. Okay, I'm a go because I'm a mess. A hot mess. Literally because this room, as usual, is about a million degrees, so I'm a hot mess in every sense of the word. And um, I guess I love you so much. Remember to leave a comment. Remember to like the video if you could, because that's super awesome. Let's see how many likes we can get this video to. Some people think you get paid for likes, you don't. It's just, it's nice to see those little thumbs up. And um, yeah, check out my Patreon if you can so that I can continue to do super cool things in 2018. You know, I want to do a lot more traveling and stuff, so. Hopefully I'll be seeing some of you guys all around the world and yeah, just have a great year. Okay, bye. <laughs>